As you begin your painting, you're going to block in major forms, starting with the outside, moving into the glass object and the organic object, whatever piece of fabric you've included in your image. That block in then needs to be checked. You want to make sure that your objects are proportionate and symmetrical. I'm at least loosely thinking about making sure that I'm painting from back to front. I know that every object is going to receive many layers of paint, so I don't have to be too, too strict about this, but ultimately by the end of this first step, every object will have sort of an anchoring, darker version um, of the local color that you observe to be true of the object. It's important to pick up some of those same colors if you're painting a translucent glass object. Even if that glass object is going to have a color or a tint all its own, you still need to have references to the surfaces uh, and reflections that are around it in order for it to read when you do come back to address the surface. Unlike in some prior paintings that we've done, I'm not super worried about getting uh, one large puddle of a color. Um, instead, it's okay to have a puddle of paint um, include some variety, some different tints, maybe a little bit of variety in terms of the light and dark that you're mixing up. Um, that is one way that our paintings end up having a little bit of a um, overlap with the impressionist copy um, that we just concluded in the class. Once I do have a first layer um, over everything in the painting, I'm going to come back and start to think about lighting, um, a slightly truer sense of local color, basically what is now on the surface of the different forms that I'm looking at. And here again, I'm going back into the background and being a little bit more deliberate about working from back to front. Uh, there's a fence outside the particular window that I'm painting in front of. Um, and so I blocked that in with just a hint of the upright form of those boards, um, but not, not too much precision. Um, thinking about atmospheric perspective, I know that the stuff outside is going to be pretty low detail. I'm also starting to adjust the color on the stripes. Um, so I warm them up just a little bit, and I'm starting to think about the places where those stripes lighten up, uh, and then the places where they're starting to um, converge down towards the core shadows that I'll be um, dealing with lately. Again, I'm thinking about the glass needing to pick up um, hints of or moments of the colors that it's uh, surrounded by. So I've got a few lighter um, little bits in there. I've laid in a really dark violet shadow color and it's not quite right in terms of its relationship to my local colors. So it's done a good job for me of creating darkness. I do want to um, adjust the color a little bit. Um, I am working in on some highlights as well at this point. Um, so you can see that that fabric is starting to take on a lot of dimension. Well, that fabric isn't going to look quite right until you do have highlights and shadows addressing, in this instance, um, both dark and light stripes. I want to make sure to match whatever cast shadows I'm seeing um, by adding core shadows to relevant objects. In this case, it's a sweet potato, so I'm starting to darken the underside. Um, of that object. And now as I go in to add highlights to the surface of that form, um, it's looking a little uh, jumpy at first. That is okay. As I start to introduce a variety of colors to the surface of that form, again, it's going to take on that sort of um, multicolored, uh, uh, loose brush um, type of surface. Um, again, sort of similar to what we we're noticing um, to be true of how impressionists were dealing with in developing color. Moving into the glass, I'm trying to do the same thing. I'm adding highlights, I'm paying attention to the local color that I see in that object, making adjustments here and there. Um, I want to think about the edges really carefully. It's late in the painting, so I'm finally adding highlights to the surface, and that's giving me a sense of roundness, translucence, and solidity on that object. Just deepening some, some shadows to get a little bit of contrast. Covering that back over and we're good.